HRC is a research technology transfer and training corporation with support of water disaster mitigation and water resources management worldwide. I believe the way that HRC's research and technology transfer is unique is that it combines advanced science with practical application. Our objective is to take science and to bring it into operation. And I think we are uh, very successful in that. We have a very interpersonal relationship with everybody that we work with and we're able to figure out a solution that works best for everybody. The Hydrologic Research Center began in 1993 uh, in an effort to bridge the gap between operational systems at the time and the advancing uh, technology, science, and engineering. The research to operations and back to research process is really the main focus of our work. We aim for sustainability, reliability, and maintainability of the systems that we implement. Uh, the idea is to make it useful for the folks that use it so that they're more effective in providing warnings or in managing water resources. One of our first projects was with the Panama Canal Authority in 1997 in support uh, of developing components for their decision support system, starting from hydrometeorological real-time prediction to studies of projected climatic impacts to shipping and to the other water uses that the canal has. There's a variety of challenges in hydrologic research. That's what keeps us all busy. To get an accurate measure of the spatial distribution of precipitation is a challenge. Uh, precipitation at a specific location is provided through in situ measurements from rain gauges. In operations, the challenges we face are a relatively few number of gauges, that the spatial distribution of those gauges is often focused on towns or urban areas and very few in remote areas. Remotely sensed estimates of precipitation provide us good information on the spatial distribution, but these methods do not actually measure surface precipitation. So we must combine satellite estimates or weather radar with surface observations to get an accurate estimate of the spatial distribution. Our approach to handle these challenges we face uh, involves using historical data and real-time data to look at the precipitation biases and uncertainty as the precipitation is coming into operational models. A key challenge in hydrologic research today is dealing with uncertainty. The way hydrologic models are being developed these days is by relying on soil property data. This information is usually being taken from soil maps. So soil maps are commonly developed from uh, people going into the field, digging holes, taking samples, sending them back to the lab, and after the results come back, they are being interpolated to create polygons of uh, equal properties. This is a very uncertain process. You need a lot of samples in order to get a good representation of the soil properties. On the other hand, there is a big advancement these days of uh, satellite information and drone information and uh, LiDAR uh, surveys that provides very certain data in uh, high frequency, in high resolution. The major challenge, in my view, is to take this newly available data sets and to create new models that can simulate the hydrologic response uh, better uh, with more certainty. In operations, the data communication and collection from different sources and the timing of that collection as it goes into operational models is very critical and it requires um, the expertise and participation of computer scientists or IT professionals to design and implement effectively. HRC is able to implement software solutions that work across the board for the, very, the widely varying needs of our member countries. Some of the challenges we face in hydrology and implementing our systems comes down to one, the availability of input data and the reliability of that input data. 
And some of these countries have highly sophisticated computer infrastructure and computer science teams. Others, not so much. So what we need to do is create a system that is flexible and complex enough for regions that can handle such complexity and need such complexity, while also not making it too complex and too resource intensive for those countries that can't handle it. And making our systems hit both of those targets at the same time is an everlasting challenge. I think what drives most of us and, and um, what has persisted over the years is uh, our desire to see the engineering and science research converted into something useful that uh, is operational and contributes to improving the life condition on the planet.